and see. We'll go into the first item, which is obsolete items for review. Um, first being letter A, high school guidance shredder, which we'll be going to scrap. Letter B is Bedminster Elementary School. The, the following items are, for the most part, going to public surplus. Uh, letter C, Central Middle School's library, weeding log going to public surplus. D is Guth Elementary Library, weeding log also public surplus. Letter E is the maintenance department, a salt spreader, which will be going to public surplus. Letter F is technology, and under that there's three items, um, two which will go to public surplus. One is recycling, number two. Uh, one is various equipment, three is flat screen monitors. And then letter G is Sell Sellersville Ed Elementary School, library weeding log, again public surplus. Any questions? So we will move this to the next board meeting. Number two is the 2016 capital improvement bid results and recommendations. Mr. Walker. Thank you. So you're aware on uh, February 17th, we had seven projects out the bid, and we had a bid opening on the 17th. And uh, Mr. Spadafor is here to go over the uh, bid tabs and recommendations. Thank you, good evening. Uh, as Jeff mentioned, we did have our bid opening on February 17th, and we had them for uh, projects that we had listed on the 2016 Capital Improvement Plan. And just to give some of the new board members a quick glimpse as to what this process is, we have a Capital Improvement Plan for the district, basically evaluation of every building in the district, all their systems, mechanical, access control, roof, parking lots, everything. So each year we go through that list and we pick out uh, potential projects for the upcoming year that need to be replaced, added, maintenance, whatever that may be. So for this year we have the list for Bedminster Central, Dibler, the district-wide phone is listed here but that was not out to bid. So basically a placeholder for the for the funding, but that's not part of the, the active projects that we're talking about this evening. Grass, Eller, Sellerville, Siler, and uh, West Rock Hill. And associated with them is a cost estimate that we put together. Some of these go back as far as 2007. So we update these every year, and the cost estimates that are listed, we have a, the cost estimates that we put together as estimates, and we have our actual bid amounts that came in. So we'll go through the, the items real quick. For Bedminster window replacement project, uh, the low bid was $167,450 and that low contractor was Penn Builders. That is to replace the window systems on the east classroom wing of the elementary school. Uh, developed a leak over the past couple of years. Uh, there's some some exterior stucco panels that have failed water into the building. We had some issues that needed to be taken care of. That actually got added to the list this year. So that made it, that was a priority. Uh, we had the miscellaneous sidewalk replacement projects. And if you recall in October when we brought this up originally, every building in the district needs some sort of parking lot or sidewalk maintenance. We reduce this to the ones that were considered safety hazards only. That's from the bus to the front door, from the parking lot, teachers to the front door, anything that could pose a potential risk. So that's what made the list on there. And that one, <clears throat> from what we had pr proposed in October, we added an area of a walk path at Goof that goes from, I believe, 6th and Cowa Hill into the parking lot. There's an area there that has a, it's got a real low, almost a swale to it, and it collects water that runs downhill, and it forms a sheet of ice across that park, that walk path. So we added repairs to that area to flatten it out and put a drain in. So we added to the scope work for that particular building. A lot of students from that area take that path to school every day instead of walking around the block. It's, uh, 
path that's been there for quite a while. The next one was uh, Dibler partial roof replacement. And I'm sorry, for the sidewalk one, T. Sheffer Contractors was the contractor who was, who was the low bid. Uh, base bid amount was for $112,650. Dibler Elementary School partial roof replacement. The low contractor was Procom, that was $156,000. Grass partial roof replacement was David Randall. And on that particular project, we asked for an alternate for a different warranty term on the, for the roof. And the base bid is for a 25 year roof. And the alternate was a 20 year roof. And we got a hundred thousand dollar deduct, and tw in twenty years we can put a coating on for half of that deduct money, and get another ten years out of it. So we are going to request that we take the deduct alternate, get the twenty year, and in twenty years we'll worry about putting a coating on for a fraction of the price and get double the difference of that warranty. So that one. The base bid amount was for 882,000. With the alternate, was a, a, a deduct of 100,000. It's 782,000 dollars. Sellersville clock and speaker repair. Uh, this is another one of the projects where the scope of work has changed. When we put this on the list originally, based on the uh, work orders that were submitted, this was for the 99 edition, which is the newest portion of that building just the clocks and speakers in that edition. Yeah, I'm sorry, 88, not 98, 88. When we went out to do the survey after we got the list approved, the system that's there is obsolete. We can't get parts, we can't expand on it. It turned into, instead of just the wing, the entire building. So the good news is we got a whole system for double what the price was. We only had $25,000 budgeted for just that edition but we're getting an entire new clock system, an entire new intercom space system that will tie into our fire alarm. So it was, they were very favorable bids for increasing that scope of work, but we do need to tell you that the scope did increase from just that one addition. And this really ties into a lot of security there. They weren't being able to make announcements then at the other end, it was breaking up, some couldn't hear, some were working. So part of the tactical audit also discussed uh, repairs in that area also so it's really a security issue also that we're looking into. Okay. the uh, coastal communications is the low contract when I have sixty five thousand eight hundred and ten dollars the Siler masonry repairs um, that was another one that came up earlier I guess in in 2015 became an issue uh, for us to put on the list and the original amount that we put on was basically repointing and making some repairs. And during our investigation in December, it's beyond just repointing brick. There's steel lintels that are corroded that are causing the bricks to pop. So unfortunately, we have to take sections of the wall apart, replace the steel, and put the brick back on. So again, another one that grew in scope. Um, but we weren't far far off of our original estimate anyway through the bidding. Uh, Penn Builders also got that project at $168,000. And the last one for West Rock Hill, uh, this was to rebuild the three, hand, three air handlers that serve uh, various offices in the building. And we actually came in under budget on the base bid, which is the rebuilding of the units. Um, we put an alternate in that is one of the few buildings that is not currently on the building management system, meaning Jeff does not have the control of what goes on in that building like he does with some of the other ones. So we put an alternate in to be able to put that onto the main system so he could control it, again, help us with some future energy savings. And that alternate for the control was $70,800. So uh, we're gonna request that we pursue that alternate even though it's a little bit more long-term savings if we can control that building like we do with the other ones on our building management system. So the total for all the projects for this upcoming summer would be $1,612,705. That, in, that includes our allowance amounts, which are not included in the estimates that are listed in the capital plan. 
we pull the allowances out, we're actually 50,000 under budget. If we take the alternate for the controls and put the project allowances in, we are, I believe, 51,000 over. So the, all, the, the discussion about alternates, I guess we're, we're already requesting that at the board meeting that we take the deduct for the roof and take the ad for the controls for West Rock Hill. Everything else will stay base bid. So we're, especially with the bid climate, there is a lot of work out there. Us being out early, as we do every year, we made out very well. We got on everyone's books early. So yeah, we asked for the approval at the board meeting uh, for the direction on how we should proceed with our summer projects. So if anyone has any questions about a particular one, I have a question about the Bedminster Elementary. Um, with Penn Builders, you, you took the base bid with no alternate for the repair of the stucco. But in, in the discussion, you had indicated that the base reason for the windows was that the stucco had failed. So why would we not fix this, that? That is a separate part of the building. It's, it's on the gym wing. And they're not. there are no windows sur surrounded that plaster on that end does not surround windows. They're just flat panels. They don't have areas where that water can infiltrate like we did with the windows. Once it got into the systems, it completely deteriorated the, the surfaces behind. So we don't have that issue with the other end. And the alternate to do the coating per square foot was a little bit higher. I don't think it's a good deal to pursue. We can do that anytime it's more of an aesthetic than it is a deficiency in the system. So we can really leave that on the books for a future project. Thank you. What type of heating system do we have at West Rock Hill? West Rock Hill is, we have, what we're talking about are air handlers. These are specific to the rooms that have air conditioning. We do have, uh, we do have boilers, two boilers. We have a it's dual fuel, basically runs on, on gas, but we do have an oil tank for backup. So this is strictly fixing the air conditioning, not the, not the heat? The air handler units also have the, the, the cooling coils in them that serves the library and library offices, the administration suite, and computer rooms. Mm -hmm. So those are original to the building that was done in 87, 88, I believe. 89. 89, <laughs> thank you. So these air handlers were built up in a mezzanine, they're, they're larger than the hatch to come down. So when we investigated, the air handlers themselves are in pretty good shape. Motors, they're, they're kept clean, hot water coils, in very good shape. Everything's in good shape about it. The problem is it's the air conditioning part, which is uh, almost like your home air conditioner. We have a condensing unit outside and a coil inside. That's part of that big air handler package. With them not making R22 anymore, you have to switch to a different refrigerant. As soon as you do that, you have to change the coil out. So we're gonna change the coil out of the existing unit, put a new coil in, and another condensing unit outside. So that runs on pneumatics, which is in a very good way to control heating and cooling, uh, to the new building management that I have now, which is electronic. So that's why we said, well, let's put an alternate in to look at this equipment so we can start getting uh, electronic controls in there so we can control them a lot better as far as you know, shutting them off at night, uh, resets, you know, when, it's, when it's 45 degrees outside, it knows it's starting to warm up, so it starts to you know, regulate back. It's, it's good energy savings. Um, that's the main brains of the management system. Once the main parts are in, my staff can then start touching onto that and, and reaching out to other areas of the school. Uh, to get more control of the rest of the school. That is still in the medics also. The, um, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, the one for the sidewalk and curb replacement, you said the, about that swale at Goose, so that is included in the base bid, it's not considered an alternate. We, that, yeah, but we, that, again, that it was, was changed. even though it wasn't a direct path between drop off and front door, that's a very high volume area. The, the kids, most of the kids from Ruth Walk, that's a main artery, and every winter that becomes an issue. There's, without fixing that low spot, we And that's falling in that 112? Correct. Okay, yeah. thank you. 
Most of these bidders are well known to the district and uh, numbers of them, well, for instance, Pet Builders is local, it's out of Quaker Town. Uh, the two that don't seem familiar to me are uh, the T. Schaefer Corporation on the, the curbs, the sidewalks, and the Coastal Communications Group. Uh, do you have any uh, experience with these folks? I, I personally have not worked with either. We, had, we did have a couple of projects with uh, other project managers in our office with Schaefer. Coastal, I don't think anyone has worked with. I did call and do the normal heavy done projects, and I did send them a contractor qualification form. We will review them when we get them back. If something comes up that we don't think looks right, we will let you know before you vote. And if there's anything that we need to do, we'll you know we'll make sure that we, we cover our bases on that. But you're right. All the other contractors, we've done repeated work with them, not only in our district but other districts as well. So we got a good group of contractors on these projects. They should do pretty well this summer. Any other questions? So we'll move this forward. Thank you. Um, item number three is the weight room floor equipment and uh, combined information, which includes a diagram. Uh, Mr. Babb? We'd like to equip the, uh, the beautiful weight room that's out there, and uh, we've got some quotes and prices. And um, we'd like to go with BSN. Um, they provide the best price for the floor and for the equipment. Um, it comes to a total of sixty-one thousand six hundred ninety-nine, and we're looking for permission to move ahead with that. Um, I know at the last meeting when this was actually we only discussed the flooring at the last meeting so you brought the um, information on the equipment uh, there were questions raised as far as um, warranty that type of um, questions yeah the warranty on the floor is a three-year warranty um, yes about the maintenance it's basically you know, similar to the same floor we have in our weight room here at the high school it's it's 100% recycled uh, rubber, so um, they ask that you vacuum, sweep up the dust, and then uh, wet mop it. Um, we use a mint clod, which disinfects it, kills all kinds of germs, and uh, that would be the maintenance on it. How long has that floor been down in there? I would think since the construction of the building. Since 2002. Well, that would have been 2000. Yeah, 2005 or six, if it was with us. Built, yeah, when, when the... Was it redone when the new equipment went in? No, it was, that was, it was just painted and new equipment went in. It was no, the floor. existing floor. So that's the original flooring. Yeah. It's, and this is comparable? Yes. To it? Yeah. Um, and there, um, I know last time a couple of the bids were, the one low one um, didn't include a lot of items. But um, so this from BSN, it includes all of, um, it includes all the items that the coaches had requested. Um, it's also on CoStars. Okay. And in regard to the flooring, that as well, because some yes. of the previous contracts didn't include cleanup, um, code base, different things like that. That's complete? Yes. Any questions? Yeah. On the, um, not on BSN's, bid on somebody else's they had mentioned if the doors needed to so will BSN take care of that? Yes, that's what they agreed to. And I, in the diagram for the exercise equipment I kind of guessed at what I was looking at but I, I noticed that the room was kind of full in the diagram and I was wondering um, if it was still being left where you wanted some cardio equipment, just Mrs. Sharkey, do you remember what you were saying, like the to work themselves back from like there the were questions thing? raised, I believe, last time in regard to the equipment that's going in there and what um, what's shown here does not um, include and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Bev, um, added cardio equipment, but if that was 
added in, is it possible, obviously, to deviate from what this diagram shows to um, accommodate other equipment? To me, it looks like there's a lot of floor space left here. Yeah, there's room to put, you know, the coaches just wanted basically one additional piece of some kind of cardio for rehab. Um, if, if they were going to do any training, it was going to be speed training. They'd be on the track. Um, they would be doing ladders in an open space on the blacktop. Um, you know, down here in, in our high school, we have um, you know some steppers, some treadmills, and some bikes. So there's there's machines down here. That this would be you know more for um, power lifting, lifting, as opposed to rehab and conditioning. When you say that you talked to all of the coaches um, and got everything in there that all of the coaches had requested, what coaches did you specifically talk to to get feedback? I put it out to all the coaches. Um, really only got feedback from two uh, girls across. Wanted to know if there was enough room. If you look, I don't know if you have the aerial view, but that would allow them, if there's bad weather, to do um, ladders, is what they do, a lot of ladder drills and speed work with their um, with their footwork um, in there, that, that was their big concern. How many different sports will use the heavy lifting equipment? Uh, mostly football in the fall. Uh, soccer will use it. Um, track and field uses it. Uh, I think basketball and wrestling will remain down here. Um, but mostly the teams that are out there, uh, they'll come right off of the practice field and, and use it. What about girls' sports? What access do they have? What do they have? The old gym when they have chance when they have a chance um, when nobody's using it? No, they would they'd be able to use it for lacrosse. You know, after their lacrosse practice, they could lift girls soccer is currently lifting in our uh, weight I'm room. I'm talking downstairs. about the new facility. But they'd be able to use this also. They'd be able to come right off of practice and use it. Is there a schedule? There's is there not a sign a, up? So how do they, how can you guarantee that the girls will have access? They have, they have to schedule it. Yeah. You just said there wasn't a schedule. Yeah, they would have to schedule. We don't have a, um, a supervisor there, so it would have to be a coach wanting to book it, just like the turf field or you know any other practice facility or a gym. They would have, they would have to book it, supervise it themselves. Who would they book it with? Myself. Okay, so you would you would the girls would have equal time. Yes. Okay. And and this is open to all sports teams. Correct. In the quote with the floor, with the flooring where you had the five initial quotes, um, and you said BSN was the lowest. There's was 16, about 16,000, and then you had other ones from Webster's and Abacus. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that were about 10,000. What was the difference in theirs? Was one offering more than the other ones were offering? Um, initially, BSN, we, we quoted the, just the floor. You guys wanted to know what the price would be for one phase on the floor. So Abacus uh, did come in the lowest. They're not a co-star um, company. Um, we had, after I met with, uh, I guess it was the facilities or the activities committee, they said, well, let's get some prices also on the weight equipment. Maybe we can do it all at the same time instead of doing it in different phases. And at that time, I went back to um, some of the co-star companies and asked them if they could provide a price for the floor and for the equipment. And uh, three of them came back with a price for, for both. And in that, BSN lowered their original quote um, if they were to get both the equipment and the, uh, the floor. So that's why there's a different price for, for it initially. So what is, I'm sorry, what is, what is their total price then for just the floor? Uh, in their new quote, yeah. if you broke it down, it would be uh, 14 Four hundred, and the equipment would be forty-seven, three hundred. So it'd still be cheaper to go with one of those other companies by like four thousand dollars, right? Abacus actually was the one that I was referencing, which is the ninety-eight sixty-eight. That's the low end, and um, from their initial one, it came in ninety-eight sixty-eight. It gave twenty-one hundred square feet. No cove-based transitions or similar have been included. We have not included waste removal, no sub-base preparation. So there, it left a lot of question marks, I think, you know, in that sense that when you're talking a $5,000 difference in those three there, I think, you know, could 
make up that difference easily. What about that? What about that other one that was a little over ten thousand? Did that one have the same things in the same? They had, if I'm understanding this right, 10,878 10, upcharge of 10% for color. Um, they had a provision in there in regard to curing, uh, about the more concrete curing, which exceeds the 28 days, um, and vapor emissions. So I don't know, I'm not that familiar with that. I don't know if that would incur other costs in regard to um, prepping the room. Um, and then theirs was the note that Mrs. Cullen referenced. If the doors that swing into the room are steel, they must be cut a half an inch by the school facilities department. So I don't, again, know what that details it. Right. And you cut a steel door a half an inch and they, still use it. They, they can easily cut the floor mats out and put the transition strips rather than cut our brand new <laughs> steel doors. So if you need any help with that, <laughs> Email me, I'm happy to help you. <laughs> but but you, you would have that same issue no matter which one of those you used, right? You would just need to make sure they do it the right way instead of having them make us cut our doors. No doors. <laughs> correct. Do the, the doors swing in, correct? Um, How do they swing out? I think they all swing in. Except the exit. The exit swing out. Any interior door swings in. Swing in, which you see on that diagram. If you look at that diagram, it shows the swing of the doors coming out of the bathroom. Mr. Babb, if you can get a, a layout of that floor, I'm happy to take a look at that to make sure that we have the transition strips at the exits and from the toilet or the yeah the toilet rooms and team rooms into toilet rooms only go into that room. If they don't cut a square out and put it to taper in each direction it won't meet ADA regulation and we'll, again, we're not cutting doors, I would rather cut the floor. So if you can get a, they'll, they'll do a shop drawing which shows where they're gonna cut and put transition strips. If you can get a copy of that, email it to me, I'm happy to take a look at it and make sure that we have what we need and that we will comply. Okay. Do you mean on, Mike, on the, um, such as on, on any of the others, like the BSN to ensure that that's what they're, Whoever, whoever. whoever we decide the floor is going in there, I'm happy to look at that. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the things you need to take into consideration between the floor manufacturers, some of the thicknesses are different. If you don't, if you don't request the right millage, that's that's a huge impact on the price. So, I think the two listed there it looks like it was the same, doesn't it? Was it wrong? I thought he said it was the same. The no, actually the. Um, Webster's is an eight millimeter. Abacus is a nine millimeter. So Webster's is a thinner um, eight millimeter. We, do we know what BSN is? It's, it's, yeah, it's eight. I have it. It says it's eight. eight here. I have a sample of it. They said a millimeter is basically the uh, difference of a uh, business card. But when it's a door coming over top of it, it can make a <laughs> I think the, the bigger concern would be keep in mind that you're going to have a, a big, beefy football player who's dropping yep. weights weights on a concrete floor. Thickness is our friend here. So what? Right, but didn't you, I'm sorry, you, you said BSN is eight and Webster's is also eight, right? Correct. So they are the same. They are the same. Now, do you know what's in the current room? Is it eight or nine? Yeah, here, I'm not sure. I know it is, um, it's a puzzle piece. This is going to be a roll. So the puzzle piece is usually about that thickness because they've got to be able to lock. Um, I just have a question on the uh, equipment. Is this, this list then, is this comparable equipment to what we have in the current weight room in regard to um, the, the different, the variety? You know, you have racks, you have kettlebells, you have uh, free weights. Yeah, this this is um, very similar to the stuff that we have downstairs. Um, you know, make pretty much equal weight so, machine, weight rooms. Um, they're a little bit different in size. The one downstairs is um, a little bit more square footage, but it's also uh, a 
more of an L design with a desk area, so there's a little bit more wasted space. Um, basically, both have, will have around equal um, square footage. Um, I, I mean, in regard to like your machines and so forth, the racks. Um, so, in that being said, that the equipment is similar in that it's um, again usable for various the various sports. Correct. It's basically going to offer us, um, you know, when we had one downstairs built, uh, we had a strength coach from Boise State came in and basically said you need to have a push, a pull, and a squat for all your athletes, for all your sports. Those are the major muscle groups that you can work. You can tweak other areas, but those are the major sport, or major areas for all sports, and these machines will enable us to do that for uh, the athletes up there. Okay. Thank you. Um, it, it says for VSN, um, it does not have an express warranty, but will fix any problems that arise in a reasonable period, time period while the school owns the machinery, assuming the machine was being used correctly. Who makes the determination of whether or not the time of period is reasonable and whether or not we were or were not using it correctly? I mean, is that kind of we're just trusting that they're going to cover it? Um. We've worked with them for years. They're, they're an outstanding um, sporting goods supplier. They supply a huge majority of our equipment. Um, the sales rep that we'd be working with, um, I've known, worked with for years, very reliable. Um, Have we had any issues where we've had to contact them for repairs in an extended period of time? Because when you're comparing that to the Webster's one, it says that they have a 15-year structural equipment warranty. Right. Um, I'm trying to think if BSN has ever sold us something that we've had to replace. Um, Things do break in a gym. Yeah, they do. Um, the machines that are going to be down there, you know, basically when they say a 15-year, that's pretty much standard. A 14-year is standard for uh, most machines um, in the industry. These machines are not like a Nautilus machine or a machine that's down in up downstairs. Um, they don't have the cables. They don't have um, as much moving parts. You know, these are basically squat racks, benches that are pretty, um, you know, solid as far as structural and machines. Dave, is that warranty from Webster's or from the actual equipment? That's from the manufacturer. The manufacturer. So is it, so then the BSN equipment is there where they, it, I think it's kind of, yeah, they might, clear they might they have the same express warranty. Can we just find out if that's possibly right. a similar situation that it's from the manufacturer on and it. what theirs is as well? Right. I, I would think it would be 14 years, but yeah, I can check on that. Okay. May I ask how we're paying for this? We just spent, um, so over seventy thousand dollars on cameras for security. We have probably some personnel changes we're going to have to make with security to monitor the cameras. We just spent a million, million some dollars, million point six on capital improvements. Where are we going to get the money for this? We're worried about two thousand dollars for a, a copier, or not with a copier. What was it? The uh, the, map. the map. Yeah, we're worried about two thousand dollars for the map. Where are we getting the money for this? This is, to me, this is an enhancement, and I think this should be coming from the Capital Enhancement Fund with the fundraising and the Build It for Bud. Have you raised enough money before bringing this to the board? Mr. Daubert will speak to that, and possibly, and if Dr. Price would like to, because he helps with uh, ad hoc. Uh, the current cash balances that we have in the um, fundraising accounts uh, totals almost $45,000. Um, of that, the Hollenbach donations, current cash value is $15,681. That they, the Hollenbach donations have a 10-year commitment, um, short is it 60000 that's committed. That's correct. There's sixty thousand committed committed cash to come in over the next uh, a total of over 10, 10 years. We have, like I said, we have fifteen thousand six hundred of that now. Um, we also have um, 
left over from the Hellman Field Project uh, in the current year capital projects fund, an additional $62,718, which was not spent on the entire project this summer. Can, uh, I, uh, can I ask where those allowances came from? Unused allowance, project allowance. So, so how did the money get there? I mean, was this over, over planned? I mean, where did the 62? We, we put project allowances in every project in case we had contaminated soil while we were doing foundation work or something. We don't use it all, it goes back to the district. Could so that work, but it, it comes back to the district. And to me, this is an enhancement. And that's what the fundraising for was for the enhancements to Hellman Field. And to me, a weight room that is really, I know you're saying other sports are going to use it, but it was billed as exclusive for it to the football team. Back when, you know, when we first started talking about Hellman Field, this gym was exclusive to the football team. And it doesn't sound to me like the girls are going to have as much access as the football team. And looking at the equipment, it doesn't look like girls are going to be accessing this equipment either. I have a very difficult time, and I cannot, I will not support this. I have a very difficult time using our money, our capital money, when we have all these security issues coming up, we have cameras, we need, we're probably going to need personnel, and we're spending over $60,000 on a gym as an enhancement when we already have a gym. I do not support this at all. I just want to make a comment, Mrs. Miller, on your um, your comment in regard to the project up there and that it was slated as a football weight room. It has been stated over and over at many meetings, and perhaps you weren't at them, um, ad hoc, oh, so I'm forth, sorry. but that it is not a football weight room. As it is not a football facility, it is a school district facility. It's an athletic facility. And I understand, and you're entitled to your opinion that you think that it is a football facility and girls are not going to be allowed in there. And personally, I would not support a facility that is not going to be there for uh, girls, athletes in our school district, in our high school here to use. So to make the statement that we are just supporting a football facility, and yes, I will say I have a football player for one more year here. But I am looking further down the road for all the students here, female and male. And that, in, in my regard, is what this is about. Not supplying a weight room for the football team. The current weight room is so over, um, overtaxed, I guess you could say, to the point where students can't get in there. And, and I beg to differ on the fact that one sport is only going to use this room and that other sports are not going to um, have use of it or that they're not going to benefit from it. I just don't see it happening. But again, you're entitled to your opinion. Um, in, in looking at the, the cost breakdown, the floor, the it, it doesn't appear to me that we are saving money by doing the floor and the equipment at the same time because when you're comparing the quotes for Webster's and the company that is being recommended, Webster's appears to be the better deal. So even by the other company dropping their price to do both at the same time, they're still not even meeting what Webster's was doing. So in my view, since we're not even saving any money by adding the equipment and there's enough money fundraised to do the floor, it makes sense to me to use the fundraising money to put in the floor and then continue to fundraise and wait till that money comes in to purchase the equipment that goes into that weightlifting facility. Um, since we're not saving any money, I thought, I thought the idea in getting the quotes of doing them both together was that we were going to save money, but I mean, realistically, we're not, when you look at what we're spending on the floor compared to what we're spending on the floor in the package, you're going from $11,000 you know, $11, to $14,000, so we're actually spending more for the floor. And then, um, you know, as far as the $60,000 that's left over in capital funds, um, all of the stuff that we just talked about in, fi in the, the finance committee meeting for all of the work that needs to be done, can't that be used, that money can be used for all of those other expenses that we're working on, right? Um, and, and with the, the looming budget crisis that we also were just talking about, um, 
you know, we don't even know if we're going to have enough money to keep the schools open, uh, depending on what the, 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 you know, the government decides to do. So I just think that at this point, it's, it's, it's not a high enough, high enough priority. We're not saving the money. And I would, my opinion would be to use the fundraising money to pay for the floor. Like you said, you can still do a lot of the, uh, you know, the training with, uh, you know, Speed, tra speed agility training in there, you can still use it for that, and then the room is still done. Um, I also think, and I've said this before, um, people rally around fundraising when you're raising money for a cause you haven't purchased yet. After you purchase it, nobody cares to raise money for it anymore. So I think this would be a good opportunity to say, listen, let's all have, let's, let's get together, let's have some fundraisers to raise money for the equipment specifically, and you're gonna get a lot of people to rally around to do that for a cause. You know, it's, Everybody wants you know, hold up the carrot and everybody will work for the carrot. But after you eat the carrot, they don't care to work for the carrot anymore. I have a comment about the cost. Um, Webster's, well, I mean, it seems like the lowest one, which I forget, the um, abacus, the, it didn't include some of the installations. Right, so if Webster's then would be the lowest with all of the um, installation, it's 10878 and then the lowest cost for just the equipment by itself is 50822 and if you add those two together, it's 61700 and what I see as the BSN combined, it's the only one combined, is $61,699. So they're the same cost to purchase Webster's floor and reflex equipment or purchasing the combined BSN. So it's the same amount. Right, so it's not saving us any money. And But when you look at the floor aspect in that breakdown, when you look at the $61,000 in the BSN, um, he was saying that the breakdown for what the floor costs is still $14,000. So the, the comparison, when you're comparing the floor numbers specifically, we would actually, you know, we're not saving any money on the floor, we're actually spending more money on the floor. I get the point that at the end you're spending, when you're including the equipment, you end up at the same price, but we're not saving any money. Right, but we're, we spend less on the floor and more on the equipment, so it ends up being the same. And there might be something to having one company do it. I don't know, but I'm just, I was just pointing out that BSN, if you do it combined, isn't more money. Um, I, just, I have a comment also about the uh, the use of the weight room. What what I see is that, that I mean, the football team dominates the use of the weight, the current weight room. I mean, they use it more than anybody. They have the prime hours, right, right after school, three days a week. So, the, you know, if there were another weight room and it, that was used primarily by the football team, it would allow the the weight room that's in the school to be used by other teams. So it does allow other teams uh, access at better times and right after school when, when people want to use it. Because there are a lot of teams who can't get into the weight room right now, boys and girls, both. Um, and then as far as the fundraising goes, I, I guess you know, I have a concern that the, the money for it is coming over a, a 10 year commitment and there's no guarantee that it'll come in. And we already have an experience with the band who offered to pay ten to fifteen thousand dollars and I believe the first payment was supposed to be in the fall. They were donating money towards the band truck. And has any money been donated that we know of? I'm asking anybody no I'm asking oh, I'm Mr. Sean, Dauber. Yeah, but I was gonna say no. <laughs> I didn't even know the band was supposed to pay us any money. Yes, they mm -hmm. wrote a letter, a commitment letter. Right before I got here, so. Yeah, they wrote a commitment that. letter that they were donating ten to fifteen thousand dollars over ten year period. Ten year period. Was it a thousand a year? Right, it's that one thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a year, because the bu the band truck that they wanted was more than the budgeted amount. Um, so I guess my, my concern is that if there's 15,000 and there's 45,000 coming over 10 years, there's no guarantee. And the idea of the 10 year commitment was for a sponsorship of a building that really was, you know, a, don a donation to the, um, 
to the stadium project and you got a sign up, which actually, you know, which lasted much longer than the ones that we've sold in the contract. But if the money wasn't going specifically to purchase anything, it was just a sign on part of the stadium saying that you were a supporter. So I see that as a little bit different because if somebody doesn't pay, then the sign comes down, whereas if they don't, we don't get the money for the weight equipment. Now we've purchased it and it's still there. I guess the name would come down, but it's, I, to me, it's a little bit, it's a little bit different. So I, um, I guess I have concerns about, um, you know, a 10 year commitment and with, without a contract and coming from many, many different, you know, small contributors as opposed to one business who was paying a certain amount of money. Just a just another option to consider that maybe it doesn't have to be all or none with that equipment. I know Sean mentioned that, that there's about $45,000 in hand through the fundraising activities. Uh, perhaps the, the weight room floor is considered and maybe some of the equipment that we have enough cash in hand to pay for and then equipment uh, added down the road as more fundraising occurs as opposed to the all or none. I mean, the equipment might cost a little more depending on when that other money's in hand, but at least the room can start being utilized for multiple things. Just something else to consider. I would feel much better about that than coming out of our capital. I well, I think, Ms. I'm sorry, I think Dr. Price is referring to what's been not coming out of the capital, but out of the current fundraising budget. Yeah. Yeah. But um, also, uh, and you know, that is something to consider. And we've seen that happen before where we put off doing things for years and then we end up paying three times the cost. Yeah. So I think it's, that makes sense to me. You have $45,000. Can you so speak up, please? We have forty-five thousand dollars in the between what's already uh, received from the Hollenbach Fund and the other fundraising. Um, so it makes sense to me to buy what you can buy, put the floor in, buy what you can buy, because a lot of it looks redundant. You know, there's several of the same kinds of machines in there, um, so that would make sense to me. But I also wanted to just circle back to the point about usage. Really, I do expect this room to be able to be used by all the teams. That's my understanding of it, so I expect to follow through on that myself. Um, but the girls can use that equipment. That's in there. Girls these days do, you know, <laughs> use, and it looks big and, and maybe something that we might not have used so much, but uh, I could see all the teams being able to benefit, so the sooner the better, I think. I, I wonder also if the donors for the Build It to Bud campaign, if they were contacted and asked and say, would you, yeah, would you consider accelerating your donation or moving up your donation? I mean, that's a possibility. I mean, you don't, if we don't ask them, we don't, we don't know. And to say, you know, because, you know, also if we say we're using the other money to purchase the weight equipment, all those donors might just say, okay, you bought weight equipment, and maybe there's a little bit more, but a lot of that might go away. But I just wonder if some of them might say, you know, I'll make, you know, yeah, I can, you know, I can make my contribution all at and, once. And that may be a possibility, because initially the Build It for Bud was to put the name on the room. And that's where Mr. Hollenbach came in and said that the family had asked realizing that they were at 60,000, their goal was 100,000, that's 40,000 more, to just put a name on there, and they, are, they communicated that they would prefer the money collected already go to the use of this. So it's possible that if they were, if this was, as Mrs. Yardley said, taken to them and said, this is the direction we're looking to go with this. Can donations be accelerated? This is, how short we are right now, um, you know, based on, on that, what are we looking at? $15,000 difference from 45 to 61, so $16,000. Um, you know, if that can be brought in in a quicker, you know, in, in a shorter time, um, can we discuss that? In the meantime, Mr. Babb, if we were to go with the 45,000, can we get something back to show what adjustments would be made to fall into that dollar range there? Yes, if you give me a $45,000 amount, we can definitely 
if that's what is that what we're looking at? Forty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. My question also would be: Can people use the rent? Would a whole team? I mean, I guess probably some of the smaller teams could use it, and maybe not the football team. You know, would the football team still use it, or would some of the bigger teams still use it if it didn't have all of that equipment, or would it be? You know, the purpose. Right, that people are going to be saying that they're just not going to use it. They're going to, everyone's still going to want to come over here because it's not, it doesn't have enough equipment to accommodate the whole team at once. Yeah, I think it, I think it would be close, but I think they would definitely try to get in there. Yeah. Um, and Mr. Daubert, the 45,000, that's, does not include the, um, the, the wall, the, the War Memorial Fund, correct? It, that's, that's correct. Okay, that's everything outside of that. Okay. I just wanted to be sure. Mr. Beck, just a quick question. This this diagram shows six racks. What is there in the current weight room right now? Okay. I think we, we at least have four. I think we have four. Okay. So by taking two of those out, then you're, you're still dealing with the same amount of equipment, like in accommodating a large team. So right. it's not so much that you're losing equipment, but you're opening up more space to other teams then. Right. Yeah. Thank you. So if you'll get, if you can bring that information or send that information and Dr. Price um, in regard to talking about, you know, um, bringing those, possibly bringing donations in sooner than later. Um, then in regard to this item, do we we moving it to next month's meeting? Or are we moving it to to the board meeting? Or do we want to wait for the next facilities meeting? I don't know. It seems to me, based on people's responses, that we would want to get more information and discuss it at the next meeting. Facilities? Yeah. Everybody yeah. okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, the last item then is number four. Thank you, Mr. Beth. The request to East Rock Hill Township regarding radio transmissions for transportation department. Mr. Mr. Geiger, for you. Yep, Mr. Geiger. Presenting that. Thank you. I guess I Sorry. am. Oh, well, yeah, Mr. Geiger's working on his uh, 16th hour of the day here. Uh, we, over the last few months, we've been experiencing a lot of dead spots on our two-way radio system throughout the district, and it's something that has been going on for years here. Where the terrain here is horrible when it comes to radio communications for the buses. When we're in a need to get a hold of somebody, sometimes we have to wait 10 minutes before they're out of an area that we can talk to them. And in an emergency situation, we're in trouble. When these bus drivers can't get a hold of us and we can't hear them in a lot of our own district. So we reached out to our current radio uh, representative that we have, and they did a study that if we put a repeater and tower up at the East Rock Hill Township building, that uh, we would greatly enhance our radio communication. It won't fill all the voids, but it will fill the majority of them, and areas that are weak will be a lot stronger. Uh, I have contacted the East Rock Hill Township Board of Supervisors, and they have agreed to allow us to put a repeater inside their building and construct a radio tower for the repeater. Uh, we would just be the ones responsible for the cost of it and maintaining it. And uh, if at any time that it is no longer necessary, we would bear the cost to re remove it from the building. Um, I have one estimate. I'm working to get three more. The current estimate is $15,300. But I just wanted to bring this to the, to the board tonight. I plan on coming back in next month with a other prices to see what we can do, if we can get anything better from any other bank, uh, representatives from radio companies. I do have one that's currently working, we just one and two more that I just got names of to contact that do the same kind of work and can uh, provide pricing. So we should have, with any hope, uh, four prices to look at. 
for the same equipment because I put it out, blanket to them that this is what we want, exactly what I got from the first company, so that everyone's bidding on the same thing. Not bidding, but providing a price on the same thing. Because under the state law, with the pricing, we need to get three quotes, or attempt to get three quotes for the same thing. So that's what we're doing currently. So I just want permission to keep moving forward to get my pricing and come back to you next month. Mr. Geiger, I yes. have a question. Um, East Rock has a tower up there already. Yeah, that one there, we would have to pay rent on every one. That, that's, yep. uh, that's a radio, uh, uh, telephone communication. Tower. That's a cell tower. So we would have an ongoing maintenance yep. to it. We would not have, we'd have to construct a building to keep it inside the, the repeater itself in heat. So we would have to enhance that. We'd have to put a generator in. We won't be on the township's emergency generator also there and indoors where it's heated. So we won't have all those other costs that we'd have to lay out also. So there are added costs to going on there. Plus I'm not really sure what, I'm sure it's not cheap to add an no antenna sense. on there. And uh, East Rock Hill has also asked that if we do, they do give us this permission, we allow them to put a, a new antenna on ours to help them too. <laughs> So it won't hurt our communication, but it also helps them. It also helps us and them. Our selling point was, well, you know, if there's an emergency, you're going to call us to help evacuate people. This will help us have better communication during a situation like that, because we will be on their emergency generator. So our radio communication will continue. And all this, if we get it all together by April, should be able to be done by the start of school also. And the quotes you're getting are all inclusive? Yes. The only thing that we would have to do, as in the first one, would be uh, any minor excavating up there to put a concrete pad in to handle the tower. And that would be our added cost that we would bear. East Rock has a backhoe. They can help us with that. And we've already talked about it. We work on those kind of deals too to try to do a little bit of help here and there. Any questions? Uh, what's the. Um the indicator lights on the school zone lights is that that's completely separate yeah that's another one that we uh added asked them to do and they're going to go through with it but we're probably have to bear like half the cost or part of it maybe it all depends uh they own them it's their responsibility we're asking for them to put a light on the back side of these if you go on blooming land over here the signs over here have a white light that flashes when the yellow ones are on on the opposite side so Currently, when people pull out of the administrative lot here at the high school or the transportation department, you can see the backs of them, but there's nothing indicating that they're on. So people, even students and staff or anything, pulling out here don't know they're on, and they can go up towards transportation and get nailed for speeding because they don't know the lights on. So that's why I've asked them to put one on the back, and it's only maybe a couple hundred dollars to have it done, but it would really greatly help of the people here, the staff, and everybody pulling out here at the times that those are on. And it's a safety issue, I would think. It is also safety. And I'll tell you, the majority of things that we look at over there is for safety, more than anything. Any other questions? So we'll look, possibly, to see that on yes. the next uh, mm -hmm. agenda. Okay, yep. thank agenda. you. You're welcome. Any uh, that's the last item. Uh, any comments from the public? Yes. Sue Furlow, West Rock Hill Township. Um, <clears throat> I want to speak about the um, equipment in the uh, facility up there at Hillman Field. I uh, recall that we had skydivers who paid their insurance. Seems like that would have bought some equipment. I believe also that if you review the videos, there was talk about two NFL players that wanted to donate. I didn't hear y'all mention them tonight. I uh, remember that you were going to sell pavers. I think you sold very few pavers. I believe that you said you were going to sell advertising signs. Um, didn't hear anything.